So during my career, I have seen so many pipelines failing due to flaky tests. And more important than that, I have seen the consequences on many teams. So today we'll see why flaky tests are poisoning your testing strategy and why if you don't fix them, it's better to delete them. So the whole point of having test automation is to build the confidence. The confidence not only of all the stakeholders, but mainly of the developers. Developers should look into their CI system in a confident way. It should be a reliable signal of the status of the application of the code. So we should trust in the signal that comes from CI. So when we run and we see the results, we should trust them. We should believe in them. However, for that to work, we need to always react to what comes out from that signal. So if there's a problem, we address it. So we basically always take actions based on a failing pipeline. However, there are flaky tests. What is a flaky test? Flaky tests are tests that will not go through, will not see a green every single time. So likely in 500 runs, you will see one or two failing. And often that will happen due to multiple types of reasons. For example, the environment is not configured as it should be. There's a timeout. The machine is overloaded. The state of the configuration is not what it should be. And because of all those reasons, often timing reasons, you might see the test failing once in a while or even one in 100 runs. But even one in 100 on one in 500, it's enough to destroy your testing strategy, your testing culture. Why? Because when developers realize that it's a flaky test, the first reaction is always to retry that build. Some of them might feel a bug with that problem, but usually those bugs go to the end of the queue and are never picked up. The consequence is that now everyone ignores that failing test. Everyone knows that once in a while we will see that test going red. So what is the action to take is to go there and retry it. However, underneath you are eroding the confidence of everyone in the testing suite. No one can tell you that on that exact case, the error was caused by that flaky reason. Likely it was another reason, but you simply ignored it because you are used to do that. It's noise in the test results, basically. It's hard to understand if it was a false positive or an actual failure. So you are living with this thing in your day-to-day -day that is impacting the trust on one thing that should be the thing that you trust more, that is your tests. And now your team still needs to maintain that source code that is living there until the day that someone will pick that bug to address it. So if there's feature change or refactoring, they will still need to touch that code. However, it's harmful because now your team doesn't trust the test suite. There are scenarios where if it's failing, let's just retry because likely it's a flaky test. And this has a huge impact in your test culture because to keep a good testing culture, you need accountability and a culture of quality. So independent of the type of failure that you are seeing, is it a flaky test or it's not, a failing build should be addressed. That's why I say that if you are not addressing a flaky test, it's better to delete it. Otherwise, you are just decrementing the trust in your test code and you should never do that. Your pipeline should be trustworthy. If you need to address a, an issue on the weekend, it should go green if it deserves a green. So in summary, when you see a flaky test in action, always look into that as an opportunity to improve. If you are not able to address it, don't keep that in your source code. Treat that as a bug with high priority to solve. However, send it away if needed. Because if you will live with that thing for a long time and it is always happening, you will get into a point where everyone tends to simply retry when they see a failing build. And that is not what you want. So don't ignore or hide a flaky test. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this video. I would love to hear from you what do you think about flaky tests, should we delete them, should we not? And in meanwhile, make sure you watch this video right here.